Daryl DK is set to return to the English Championship, more specifically this time to West Brom. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manage TV, and welcome to another transfer breakdown video. And man, 2022 started pretty hot for the U.S. Men's National Team. Right away, January 1st, the Ricardo Pepe transfer for over $20 million, then the Daryl DK transfer, and there's many more to come, and I'll gladly break them down here at the channel. Now, Daryl DK is returning to the English Championship, which is the English Second Division. And in this episode, I'm going to tell you why I think this is a great transfer. I actually think it's a brilliant transfer. And I'll break down the reasons why I think it's good. It's not just because I think it's good. I don't just have an opinion. I also have some facts to back my opinion here. Now, one thing to point out, too, is the Pepe and DK transfer just packs our USMNT abroad series. If you're old here at the channel, you most certainly know about that. It would have been a lot easier if I did an L3 abroad series. Just imagine how easier my life would be if I just did cover, cover the Mexicans, Mexicans abroad, abroad only. I guess we'll never know. Now, as this is a massive loss to the Orlando City squad, this is a massive win, in my opinion, for the U.S. Men's National Team over the long term. I'll address that in the video. With that said, this video is sponsored by absolutely no one but yourself. So hit the like button. That's a great way to sponsor the video. It expands our reach. Comment down below your thoughts on Daryl DK's transfer and maybe even Ricardo Pepe's transfer. With that said, everyone, let's play the intro and let's start the transfer breakdown. Before we go to the good, let's break down how this transfer happened. So the first thing to say right away is there were reports out that this would be a loan move with an option to buy to West Brom. However, the club itself has confirmed this is a permanent deal. Daryl DK signed with West Brom for four and a half seasons. The transfer fee was reported to be around $9.5 million, plus some bonuses, plus a 20% future sale. Daryl DK's current market value is $11 million. So technically, the fee paid up front is lower than that. But with the add-ons, they'll probably surpass that, plus a 20% future sale that Orlando City held on to. Originally, we remember that Orlando City was requesting $20 million. They didn't get that. But maybe with the add-ons and the 20% sale, it could get to 20 million one day. So Daryl DK leaves Orlando City after having a strong season, even though he had some low moments and in injuries, he had a pretty strong season for Orlando City. He still managed with the injuries and issues he had and missing the beginning of the season because he was still at Barnsley to play 19 games and score 11 goals and get an assist for Orlando. I personally think this is a great move. So now let's dive into that. So pretty much now let's dive into only DK and West Brom and why I think this is almost a perfect fit for both the player and the club. Now, keep in mind, before I give you the reasons why I think this is a very good transfer, over time, in a year or two, maybe it won't work out. And maybe all these reasons will just be BS and they don't work out. But these are all based on the current data information that we have right now. Based on the current information and data that we have, which I'm going to point out, I think this is a very good transfer. And let's start with the very first reason that I have to talk about. The current manager, Valerian Ismail. He is the former coach of Daryl DK at Barnsley. So for starters, he knows Daryl DK and DK knows him and his system. Last season when he was at Barnsley, he did get DK to be very productive right away, almost helping Barnsley make it back to the EPL, the English Premier League, the first division. Now the two join forces once again to try to lead West Brom to the English Premier League. During his time at Barnsley under Ismail, DK managed to score nine championship goals in 19 matches, helping them make to the playoffs where they would go on to lose and stay in the championship for another season as well. Ismail knows DK. DK knows West Brom needs to win, which leads me to the next reason why I think this is a great opportunity for DK. So what I was saying about Ismail is he knows what West Brom needs to jump to the next level in the English Championship, even though they're doing pretty well. They currently sit in fourth place, so they're on track to fight for that spot in the English Premier League. But DK might be one of the missing pieces for them to make the jump for the next level, which brings me to reason number two why this is such a great transfer. So reason number two is West Brom struggles on offense their defense has been pretty good actually their defense with 24 games played has actually been the best in the league keep in mind this is being recorded on saturday so there's 24 games played in the league not 25 so by the time you're watching this it's at game 25 but regardless we have a sample size of 24 games this one game the 25th game won't change any of this analysis 
So look, they currently sit in fourth place in the league with 30 goals scored and 18 allowed. So just 0.8 goals allowed per game in 24 matches played. As I said at the time of this recording, by the time this matches, this video's out, there will be 25 games and these numbers might be a little bit different, but not much different from what I just reported. With only 18 goals allowed, they are ranked the best defense in the English championship. However, the offense is ranked number eight for goals scored per match. Which is quite interesting, right? When you average out best defense and eighth offense, when you average that out, you get number four, which is where they currently sit, right? They're in fourth place with a very good defense and an average offense. Now, when compared to teams up top, they're not scoring as much as the top three teams. The ones near them on the table, Blackburn, Fulham, and Burnmouth, they all have over 40 goals scored in the league, while West Brom has just 30 in the moment. However, West Brom's issues are not on creating opportunities, but converting the opportunities. They currently sit in second place in expected goal stats. Expected goals are the XG stats, so it's essentially the amount of goals that you would expect them to score based on the opportunities and shots they've created and gotten throughout the matches. Their current XG stats is 43.5 goals. So that means they were expected to score a little bit over 43 goals, yet they only scored 30 while all other top four teams are overperforming their XG stats or at least matching it. West Brom also ranks second for most big chances missed. So essentially what I'm saying here is the opportunity to score for the strikers or wingers or midfielders, they are there. They just need someone to put the ball in the back of the net. And that's where Daryl DK can come in and resolve that problem or at least make it a smaller problem, essentially. That's what I'm trying to say. So currently Callum Robinson, which is a pretty good championship center forward and their main starter, has only four goals in 22 matches, while Jordan Hugill, the backup and option off the bench, has only one goal in 20 matches played. So DK can, can become right away an important piece at the West Brom team and take them to the next level by scoring goals. They're not scoring goals. They're offensive players. The center forwards are just not scoring. Now, from all I said, he's not guaranteed to start, but he's guaranteed to get opportunities and he's expected to make his debut January 15th against QPR in the English Championship. He does know the system and the coach knows him pretty well. He's expected to play as a center forward, obviously, as they already said, they see him as a nine. And I expect to, to play as a target man, essentially. The same way they use them in Barnsley, using the best of him, the physicality. That's what I expect him to do. So expect Odika to be a target man for the team and hopefully a starter. He will get chances. I can guarantee you guys that. Now, the next reason is actually two reasons in one why this is a great move from Daryl DK to West Brom and actually why it's a great move for West Brom as well. A great signing for West Brom as well. And if you guys haven't already, make sure to hit that like button right now. It's free. It takes a second. And it's a great way to support the channel. Okay, so this reason now is the championship is a great league to transition to the Premier League. If I feel like a player is not ready for the Premier League, I think the championship is a great place for you to transition and get prepared for the Premier League, even though it's a much lower level. Along with that, another important reason that I want to point out at this section is that this is a permanent deal. So DK now has a home in Europe. I'll explain very soon why I didn't want Daryl DK to go right away to the Premier League. But for now, the championship is a league where physicality thrives. And that is a big part of Daryl DK's game. Not the only part, but a pretty big part. That allows him to have an impact right away in a very competitive league, as he did during his time at Barnsley. Along with that, as I said, they're also fighting for a spot in the Premier League, which means we can have Daryl DK play in the Premier League in the near future with a smoother transition. What do I mean by smooth for transition? It's much easier to transition to Premier League when you're already in a club that's going there through promotion rather than just arriving somewhere and having to fight for a spot, not knowing the system, not knowing the players, not knowing the coach. So if he does go to Premier League later on, it'll be a smoother transition if it's through promotion. If that happens, it almost did with Barnsley. It doesn't mean it will with West Brom. It also doesn't mean it won't. But not just that, him getting six months in the championship or a season or two or even three, which he'll be 24 by then, it's fine if he arrives in the Premier League and has an impact at age 24 or 25, as long as he's performing, getting minutes and doing well in the championship, that is totally fine. I'm going to talk about a few players, a few examples of some players that had a similar situation and now are key players in the Premier League. Essentially, what is the point of him going to the Premier League now to just stay on the bench or not get minutes? I think this is a good move. Plus, this will help Daryl DK continue his development and help the USMNT over the long term and probably 
over the short term because he's going to be getting minutes probably in form. Plus, it is a permanent move, as I mentioned, so he can be there for a while. It's not a top club that will be loaning him out like it happens to Matt Miazga. He now has a home in Europe where he'll have time to adjust, improve, develop, and perform. Also, I understand one of many people's concern is that this is maybe not the best league to develop technical ability, right? Since it's a more physical league, they're focused more on that rather than technique, unlike a Dutch league per se, the Redivise, which focuses more on technical players. And Daryl DK's main weakness is his technical ability, so he probably won't develop that as much. I personally don't see that as a problem at his age the technical ability won't improve much i'm just telling you from personal experience and from players that i've talked to and worked with in the youth level and professional level there it just won't improve that much i think this move puts him in position to succeed over the long term regardless sometimes you don't have to be good at all aspects of the game there are strong aspects of the game that he can excel improve and become even better at set pieces diagonal runs pressing game finishing and man even the physicality, along with getting minutes and experience. So yes, the technique can improve, but it's not needed to improve that much. Remember, some players just aren't meant to play in certain ways. Maybe Daryl DK is one of those. That is his playing style. We get used to it and we know what he can offer. And the coaches that know what he can offer, use him to the best of his ability. But there have been players in the past that have improved their technical ability in the championship because of all the physicality as well one of them i'm going to talk about very soon is Mikel antonio for example all right so before i wrap up this video because i already told you why i think this is a great move from daryl dk let me explain very quickly why personally i'm okay with him going to the championship instead of making the jump to the premier league right away along with the fact that i already made a video on that which i can put the link on the description we made a video talking why i didn't want daryl dk to go to premier league back when he was still at barnsley a few months ago actually six or seven months ago let me tell you a couple other reasons. Look, here are two English Premier League examples that I want to use. Players that thrive with their physicality and benefited from a few seasons in the English Championship. One of them is Mikel Antonio. He played seven seasons in the Championship before moving at a much older age to the Premier League. Much older age than Daryl DK right now. And we're all seeing what Mikel Antonio is doing right now with West Ham and the Jamaica national team. So he took time in the championship and developed into the player he is today. Another player I want to talk about is much younger than Mikel Antonio. His name is Ivan Tony from Brentford. He's showing what he's capable of doing in the Premier League. Yes, he's been struggling a little bit here and there in the Premier League, but he's still very effective. But he struggled in the English Premier League all the way back in 2015-2016 season when he goes with Newcastle. He was pretty much useless in that season for Newcastle while this year he's a pretty good player for Brentford after he failed at Newcastle he went back to the English lower leagues to be successful and then helped Brentford last season move back to the Premier League and now he's doing okay at age 25 my point here is I'm 100% comfortable with DK staying in the championship for two or three seasons until he's 24 25 coming into the Premier League and having an impact right away rather than going there struggling not doing well and then going back to the championship wasting a season I'm okay with this smooth transition it might be better for his development now that's just my opinion comment yours down below I might be full of crap it, I might be wrong Daryl DK might struggle in the championship he might do well this might be worse for his development or might be better let me know your thoughts on the comment section down below and hit the like button while you're at it as it truly helps the channel all right everyone that does it for this video and one thing I want to say in my opinion this is a great transfer based on the data and information that we have right now now you never know until things actually happen so in a few months from now or years we might see as this a terrible transfer, maybe even worse than staying in Orlando City. Regardless of that, I think right now it's a good move, and I think Daryl DK will succeed in the English Championship. Will he succeed in the future in the Premier League? Only time will tell. Thank you very much for watching. It's going to be a very, very, very busy month. Busy year, actually, but busy month in regards to transfers for U.S. Men's National Team players. We'll make sure to keep you guys all updated. Subscribe if you enjoy the channel. Happy 2022. That was kind of weird, but well, welcome to 2022. Thank you for watching everyone and have a great day.